Hi there, this is Marty from OwingsArt.com and thanks for stopping by today as we take a look at these Pentelic watercolor pencils. There's 12 in the set, but before we get into that, what I want to do is to lay out a sketch. I'm going to first start with pencil, then I'm going to go to ink, then I'm going to go to the pencils, and then I'm going to use water to fill in this building. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sketch in a, uh, a building, on, and this is all freehand. Um, I use a photograph as a reference here, and it's on my computer screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, yep, freehand all this. So I'm not using any rulers or measurements. So not all of the angles and things will be absolutely perfect. But um, when you're sketching in the field, um, you generally don't have the luxury of drafting tables and angles and all those things. And But you do usually can carry a little ruler or straight edge with you. In this case, I didn't use any of that. I'm just kind of drawing by sight and some experience. But... Um, you'll see as a consequence of doing that, not everything in the picture comes out correctly. So you can already see some angle problems on the left-hand side um, with respect to perspective. So the windows, if you look closely at the windows, they shouldn't be the same height front to back. They should actually be smaller as they go off in the distance on the left side. But that said, um, you know, I'm just roughing it in here. So, um, and then plus it's easier to kind of see your own um, mistakes when you step back a little bit. So what I'm doing here is just roughing in kind of the the windows and getting some of that right. Working on this telephone pole here. In a minute I'll begin inking uh, this very light drawing. And I'm using a TK9400 uh, Faber-Castell lead holder to do the pencil work here. In a minute I'll be going to a uh, to use um, a Copic Multiliner SP uh, which will uh, which I'll do the inking with. So here you can see I'm just finishing up some of the pencil work. Toughest part on this one was probably the lettering on the building. You know, it starts small because it's in the distance and then it's supposed to grow. It was a little tricky getting that right. So here I'm going to use this. That, this is the Copic SP uh, ink pen. And they're really good, and I just love using them for sketching. So here's I go along in this sketch. You know, you'll notice me shifting the notebook's angle from time to time. Don't know if that's really helping me or not when I do that, because sometimes it throws off the the uh, the angles. And you know, as you can see on the right-hand side windows, they seem slightly tilted in, not quite straight. But again, for a hand sketch, you know, I'm not going for perfection here. Um, so yeah, with compound angles like on that garage that's attached to the side of the building, it's a little tricky to try to get those compound angles right, so I'll probably go back and rework those later. Um, just drew in that chimney there. Now I'm doing the skyway and the light post. And there's a little, there's some garages off to the side, and um, I think I got the line work right in there on the perspective, but I'll go back and again fix that later. This is an old brick building. It uh, was a furniture seller and manufacturer here. I think they had a showroom and a manufacturing uh, facility as well. Anger and Olson. So here, when I go in and do the ink work, I may not follow the pencil lines exactly, but generally they're there as a guide. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these Pentelic pencils and give them a shot. So I'm just going to pick out a few colors here that uh, that are going to work for this building. I've got this brown and red because that's the brick is kind of reddish. You know, of course, I'll need brown, black, um, and a couple of uh, a purple and a blue for some shading. A yellow because when the light hits the right side of this building, uh, as as I see it in the picture, um, in the photograph I'm using for reference, the Building is lighter on the right side than it is on the front of the uh, of the building itself. So the that left side of the building that's a lot darker. It's in shadow. So I'm going to make sure that I define that as well as I can. That's important when you're when you're drawing to know where the light's coming from and to know um, what shade you know what is it going to look like in the shade. So here I'm going to go in and even darken this dark side of the building even more. So now the color is going to be even more pronounced. So work in between these letters, which is kind of tricky. Take your time in there. 
and then the windows as well. We'll go back through that and add a little bit more detail. There's some shadow in this. This is kind of like this doorway and that's recessed corner door and then you got this big pillar which is um, hopefully visible there. So I add a little yellow on the cast uh, on the sun sunny side of this building or the light side. And I'm just going in and add some detail on these windows. Okay, so what I can see here as I step back from this drawing a little bit is some of my angles are a little janky. It doesn't help that I have this turn, but I'm going to use this water pencil to kind of fill in where I've, I've drawn. And on the light side, you won't, it's not so pronounced, but when I get to the darker side of the building, you'll see more of that of how this pencil blends into, uh, turns into watercolor. Um, I'll fix some of the angle issues on this building to the extent I can, but again, like, you know, not a big deal, right? It's a freehand sketch. So part of the lesson you learn when you're watercolor, when you're sketching in general, any kind of sketching is, you know, learn a lesson, take, take something away from each sketch you do. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's just your representation of it anyway. So, but what I do like to do is I, I do like to learn from my mistakes. So I can see here I've got several, especially that the windows uh, should be getting larger, you know, as they go to the right. And I didn't really do that as well as I should have. And then that garage, that weird garage on the left side, that's kind of janky. And, uh, and as well, the garage on the, on the right. So some of the angles aren't quite right. And, 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 it, and if you don't have those right, the viewer, the person who's perceiving it, they'll they'll pick up on that. The human eye gets it, and it, it's kind of uh, disconcerting to the human eye, and therefore it doesn't look right. But <clears throat> that's part of the experience uh, and learning. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some of the different colors in this set and just kind of lay them out here and then apply some watercolor and I'll do some mixing here. I'd like to see how these blend. But again, using this water pen, just kind of trying out these different colors. You know, they're, they're not bad. I mean, these are made in Taiwan. They're very inexpensive. This 12 color set was about seven bucks. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, that's not, not gonna break the bank for most folks. Yeah, you know, and they blend just okay. They're they're fine. I'm gonna to try to get a little orange here with the red and the yellow. See how that works. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, all in all, these are okay. I mean, they're they're fine. Um, and they are what they are. They're not expensive. They're very, as a matter of fact, inexpensive. So, um. If you want to use these for, you know, just light sketching or schoolwork or, you know, kids projects, they'd be great for that. Um, I wouldn't probably try these out for anything that you want to keep archivally or any, any uh, you know, your great work. But, you know, they're okay. Not bad all in all. So here's a list of some things um, about these pentelics that you might want to know. So you get 12 of them in this tin. Again, and they're made in Taiwan. They're good for casual sketching, but probably not more than that. They mix and blend well. They're six-sided. They layer decently, and they sell for about $6.99 at Hobby Lobby. Well, that's about it for today. Thanks for dropping by the channel. Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. This is just a picture of the tools I use today. All right, well, thanks again, and so long for now. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.